We are D minus four until the meeting between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Anticipation builds as this isn't the first time the two are sitting down for talks. Hwang Woo-jun sheds light on the agenda and what we can expect from the summit in Pyongyang. This year's first inter-Korean summit in April was a landmark in inter-Korean relations. The second one, behind closed doors in May, resuscitated talks between Pyongyang and Washington and ultimately made possible the historic Kim-Trump summit in Singapore. So for the third inter-Korean summit of 2018, what might be on the table? In this summit, the two Koreas have agreed to review the implementation of the Panmunjom Declaration and discuss its future direction. Also, they will draw up practical ways to establish a lasting peace and to ensure joint prosperity, especially through the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Probably the most significant point to watch this time in Pyongyang will be President Moon resuming his role as the so-called mediator between North Korea and the U.S., especially with relations between Pyongyang and Washington seemingly deadlocked. North Korea has demanded that in conjunction with its denuclearization efforts, the Korean War must be declared officially over. But the U.S. has insisted that North Korea first take practical steps such as disclosing the status of its nuclear facilities and ballistic missiles. The tension led to President Trump canceling his Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's planned visit to Pyongyang last month. So the spotlight will be on whether President Moon is able to come up with a compromise for the two sides and break through the stalemate. Also on the agenda, of course, will be practical measures to continue improving relations between Seoul and Pyongyang. The two Koreas have already kept some of the promises they made in April. Establishing a joint liaison office and holding dialogue and negotiations in various fields. Check. Jointly participating in international sporting events such as the 2018 Asian Games. Check. Holding reunions of separated families. Check. And of course, the summit in Pyongyang itself is also a fulfillment of the Panmunjom Declaration. So this time, it seems they'll need to talk about easing military tensions and boosting their economic cooperation. President Moon has insisted that advancements in inter-Korean relations are the driving force behind the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. It will be the first time the two leaders have met in four months, so the world is eager to hear their assessment of how much progress has been made toward the goal of putting a formal end to the Korean War by the end of this year, as stated in the Panmunjom Declaration. Hwang Woo-jun, Arirang News.